This is the Satechi USB-C Slim version 2 hub. If you're anything like me, then you may well be a fan of these really nicely machined aluminium or magnesium alloy sort of products that um, they just look and feel really nice. Well, this is one of those. It is entirely metal construction and it just makes it feel so much better. Because I did a review a while ago of this. This is the uh, the Anchor Hub. And I really like this. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is the uh, Anchor 18 one. I can't get it out of the thing now. And um, one of the things I said was I thought this was metal. I, when I saw it on the uh, on online, I thought this was metal, but it's actually a, a plastic case. But this one is act actually metal. So I was really curious to see how um, how this... Yeah, just what it was like. So let's take a look in the box. I've had this out. I've um, I've used this. I went um, I went away for uh, a week with the family not too long ago, and I took this with me. Used it for everything I did on the uh, on the on the MacBook here, and uh, you know I hooked it up, hooked the MacBook up to the TV with the HDMI out, transferred all my data from filming and from um, and from photos and stuff like that, and it worked a treat. But it's a really tiny device, as you can see here. Really, really small. It just comes. Packaged in nothing but this pretty cheap looking black plastic thing and uh, comes with a uh, whatever that is, user manual. I'm not sure how much of a user manual you need for something like this. One thing I will say is that if you're after USB C 3.1, remember that this said it is, uh, sorry, it's this is a USB 3 device, it's not a 3.1 device. So this is five gigabits per second maximum. There is no 10 gig support on this. So let's have a look around the product. Uh, we've got two USB-A ports here, and then we've got uh, an SD card slot and a micro SD card slot as well. And then we've got a uh, power delivery slot, so you can plug in your charger into here and uh, take power out through the cable then back to your laptop. This does not, this, this one is not a data port. And that's it as far as connectivity goes. It's pretty basic in that sense. There's just the USB-A ports. Uh, and then on the end here, we have a an HDMI port that supports 4K at 60 hertz. So really super simple, not too much to it, is there? But it's just, just nice because it's all metal. A little bit sharp around the edges here, I find. It's like as if, yeah, it's not, not perfectly finished there. These little, if I run my finger over that, that's quite sharp. Uh, so the finish on it isn't as good as it looks, but it's still still really nice, isn't it? I mean, it's a really tidy little hub that I love it. And it gets a little bit warm when used, nothing more than any other hub do does. People ask me questions about this on uh, videos I do on hubs and say, oh, does it get warm? Is that a concern and all this? Well, I honestly say that, you know, if you're shifting data at five gigabits per second, some work is going on there, right? Some computing work is going on. And as a result, things are going to get warm. You can't do that sort of like shifting of data without some sort of heat generation. So yeah, these things do get a little bit warm. When it's plugged into the TV, it sits there and it is a little bit warm. I've had it with the charger plugged into here. And yeah, it gets a bit warm, but nothing more, nothing to, to worry yourself about. So there you go, there's the product. Let's uh, plug it into the MacBook and see how it performs. I've said before on these videos that I know some of you may prefer the screen capture approach because it's a little bit clearer on the video. What I prefer to do is get the absolute maximum performance out of the devices I'm connecting and make sure that the computer is doing nothing else, so not having to do screen cap at the same time. Um, and I just wanna be able to connect this hub have this running entirely separately, so I'll just film the screen. Okay, so sorry about that if it's you know not quite as clear as it could be. So uh, let me just get into my MacBook here. I'm gonna bump up the brightness a little bit on this so you can hopefully see what, what I'm doing. And we're gonna just plug the hub straight in to one of the USB-C ports. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just look. You can see that there's a little, can you see that on there? Little blue LED there. And the first thing I'm going to do is just look at the system report to see how the hub is actually shown on the system report. All right, so first thing to remember is that this is not a Thunderbolt device, so it's not going to show under Thunderbolt and USB 4. We're not going to see anything under there. No device connected, as you can see. 
but it is a USB device. So if I go under USB here, we should now on our USB 3.1 bus, on this is this is the second bus here, the uh, the other port um, on the left hand side of the this particular MacBook. This is a MacBook Pro M1, and uh, that has nothing connected to it. But this one you can see now has a USB 3 hub connected to it. So all moving down here, you can see the chipsets that are used on it. So it's a Via Labs chipset by the look of things, up to five gig. And um, we've got the USB 2 hub on here as well, USB 2 billboard via labs. Hopefully that will give you any information that you wanted on what type of chipset it's using and how it looks when it's connected. So let's connect an actual drive to this. First one I'm going to go for is this. This is actually a USB, it's actually a, oh, is it 10 or 20, 20 gigabits per second drive theoretically? But you can't get that sort of speed off this, this MacBook. So let's just see how it performs. Uh, I'm going to have to do that obviously with a USB-A connection because it doesn't have any USB-Cs on here. So I'm just going to hook that uh, into the... Okay, plug that in now. So let's recreate. Let's recreate the system report. And go down to here. And what we should have now... There we go. We've got our Extreme Pro 55 AF and as it says here, up to five gigabits per second. And that's right, that's all I would expect this hub to be able to support. So for five gigabits per second to a drive like this, I would sort of think we'd get in the region of, I don't know, what, 500, 500 megabytes per second, something like that, maybe? Mm, not too sure, that, yeah, probably something like that. So let's have a look and do a, do a speed test. I'll do the Blackmagic disk speed test to start with, but I will also do a straight file transfer as well. So let's select the drive. Let's just do a one gig one to start with. Select the target drive as the drive that isn't even showing on here. Oh, it is there, put it there, it's that one. <laughs> and let's go. Okay, not amazing, 297.5 write speed, 280 write speed, read speed, 280, 290. So not getting any more than about 280, 290 off that. Not terribly impressed with that. Let's just stop that. And uh, what I'll do now is do an actual... Um, just a, a straight file transfer uh, from, from the drive to, say, the desktop or something like that. So have we got any big-ish, large-ish files here? Uh, 38 gig, here we go. So let's just start transferring this file off the drive onto the desktop of my MacBook here and mm, go to the activity monitor and see what sort of speeds we're getting on this. So if I move this up, you should be able to see down the bottom, if I go to disk activity here, that we're getting a pretty consistent 300 and, ooh, about 320, 320 megabytes per second. Varies, doesn't it? Varies a little bit between 300 and 320 megabytes per second. So it's transferring relatively quickly, but it's not that fast, really. 320, 330 megabytes per second. I would have thought one gigabit per second usually comes in at about 112 megabytes per second, I think. So, of course, you've got to factor in overhead and all that sort of thing. But I would have expected five, five gigabit connection to, to perform better than that. Unfortunately, I've never had any reason to update my SD card. So the best one, best one I've got is this old one, which is a 90, 90 megabytes per second. But I'm going to still try this one in here. I'm going to slot it into the hub and just see what performance it gives us so is that is that right oh yeah there we go okay so it's popped up in the bottom there so i'm just going to um, read a file from the macbook drive over to the sd card and just see what sort of performance that gives us the best i would expect on this card is 90 megabytes per second let's see if we're getting anything close to that mm. Yeah, 
it's a little bit it's fluctuating a little bit but it is around 82 84 megabytes per second so the sd card side of things seems to be performing okay yeah it's bumped up now to 90 so not too bad actually that seems okay we're just just looking down the bottom here if i can just bring the camera in so this figure here one we're looking at it's not entirely accurate there are some other things to consider when you're looking at this activity monitor on mac os but it does give you a good guide and we can see there that this is transferring at a fairly constant 82 to 84 megabytes per second perfectly all right i would expect you know nothing better than that from this from this car, old card gonna have to invest in a newer card to be able to really put these things through their paces as you can see here i've uh, hooked this up to the HDMI cable and this is now going into uh, the mon a monitor that's just up here and uh, although I can't move my camera onto the monitor I should be able to show you how that's performing on again going into the system report here so if I just close down these windows so here we are in the graphics and displays section of the system report and you can see there that the resolution of the onboard monitor is 3360 by 2100 and then we've got our LGR uh, oh, sorry, the LG 5K monitor here, uh, but because I'm connecting it on HDMI, um, this will only support 3840 by 2160, which is 4K at 60 hertz. So that's what's coming out of the dock. The dock will happily send 4K 60 hertz signal out via HDMI to support an external monitor. I wasn't really happy with the result that the Mac had given speed-wise, so I kind of thought, well, is this a limitation of the actual... USB controller on the Mac itself. So what I've done here is um, I've just uh, remoted into my Windows computer and I've installed Crystal Disk Mark 8 and I have attached the hub. So this is the Satechi hub and you can see here that we've got the SanDisk drive. It's got the same name as uh, the drive that was on the uh, Mac a second ago. And I'm just going to give that one a test in Crystal Disk Mark to see what the result will be. So this is on drive L. And I'm just going to run through all tests now. It'll take a bit of time to do, but we'll whiz through that and let's have a look at the results. Wow. So quite a massive difference between the performance on a Windows machine and the performance on the Mac. F considerably better, uh, both with the um, eight Qs, eight th and uh, one thread session and the uh, one q and one thread session there both i think well the most we were getting on the mac was 290 megabytes per second and on this we're maxing out at 466 and a half megabytes per second so vastly faster than on the mac controller on the mac usb controller i have absolutely no idea why because both of them <clears throat> support usb 3 and doesn't really make any sense to me i think the reason we've got sort of really similar values here between read and write and in fact write is faster in some cases is because we're not saturating the actual capability of the drive at all the drive can happily do these speeds it's just obviously limited by the amount of data that can be sent through the hub and through the USB controller on the hub itself. So um, so therefore, you know, it's able to do that write speed if it can get the data, basically. Uh, but yeah, massively better and much, much more in line with what I would expect from a five gigabit per second uh, connection, USB connection. Final thoughts then? Well, it doesn't perform quite as well as I thought it would do uh, speed-wise. I was a little bit disappointed by the uh, by the speeds I was able to achieve from that there. Uh, but really, if you are after speed, you're probably going to want to go for a, at least a USB 3.1 device anyway, providing that your hardware supports it. Uh, otherwise, it's probably a little bit overpriced, isn't it? This I think this retails at about £50, which for a hub of sort of relatively basic functionality is expensive. But... God, it does look fine, doesn't it? It really is sleek. It is lovely brushed aluminium finish. Very, very tiny. Very, very slim. It's just a really, really nice design and uh, finish. So if that's what's important and you're not after the kind of blistering speeds, then it could be a good choice for you. As usual, I will put links for the product in the video description. 
if you would like to support the channel, please use those and uh, just click on them and see uh, what the price is on Amazon. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, then do consider subscribing to the channel and or just give it a thumbs up or something like that. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Don't mind either way. But thanks very much for watching and uh, looking at this Satechi USB-C hub with me. I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.